Hello and welcome to Digital Woodcarver. My name is Laney Shaughnessy and I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me this evening. Uh, these end of the month videos that we do, we normally, uh, I'm normally accompanied with uh, or by Burl Tishner, the owner of Digital Woodcarver, and we discuss whatever the topic is for the evening. Now with this evening, uh, unfortunately, Burl Tishner could not join me, so you have just me tonight. And what I want to talk to you about is getting more out of your DWC 1824 Mini Carver. Now, this is going to be the last video in the discussion of our Mini Carver. And in the following month, uh, coming up here in April, we will be discussing our DWC 2440 unit. And for tonight's topic, we are going to discuss the accessories that are available for the 1824 and things that would mini carver. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with our mini carver unit, let me just go ahead and um, bring up an image of it. Our mini carver is our bench top model. It is an 18 inch by 24 inch cutting area with a four inch Z height. Uh, this is our entry level CNC machine and uh, it is a great uh, beginner unit. Uh, it could be categorized as a hobby unit or light production. Uh, we have many of our users that have started out with the mini carver and as they grow or as their needs grow, uh, they can move up into the larger units, but this is a great place for them to start. The mini carver, as we discussed in the past, comes in and rolls in at a price of about $2,679, which includes the unit, the router, the Planet CNC TNG motion controller software, as well as the Vetric VCarve desktop software. Now, the mini carver alone can carve 2D projects where you're cutting, whether you're cutting out parts or uh, carving out uh, shapes and designs and things. We can carve two and a half D and 3D projects uh, such as 3D models, uh, whether, you know, uh, whatever they may be, they could be a variety of so many different things, uh, you know, with your imagination, there's so many things that someone can come up with. And with the mini carver, we have some additional accessories that can help us grow. Now, one of those accessories or one of the more notable accessories accessories is the fourth axis. Uh, the mini carver fourth axis uh, takes and gives us the ability to do rotary style projects. Now those rotary style projects could be things uh, such as small spindles for decorative designs. Uh, they could be uh, things almost like hollow candlesticks and things. We could have some fun with that. Or also uh, furniture type table legs and things. Now, the Mini Carver's fourth axis capacity is roughly around 18 inches uh, by two and a half to three inches in diameter. I think three inches is going to be the max uh, that you'll be able to get out of that. But um, it is... Uh, uh, you know, going to be around that three inches diameter. So there's quite a few varieties of things that we can do uh, within that capacity uh, that could help us uh, create projects uh, or furniture pieces or whatever it may be. Um, the fourth axis rolls in around $499 uh, for that accessory. Uh, and it comes with a, a Telstock Live Center. Uh, a motor uh, head with a four jaw chuck. So there's a lot of different clamping abilities and things. It does mount right on top of the mini carver and the mini carver carves right on top of it. So now our users uh, that have the fourth axis have the capacity of doing these 360 degree around turn type projects, uh, whether they be statues, spindles, table legs, or other parts. Now the fourth axis is uh, at $499, it is a, a, an affordable price for it, uh, but it's also not something that a user would obtain or get unless they actually had a practical use for it. 
Um, there are uh, needs other than carving on the table and doing our 2D and 3D projects and two-sided projects and things. There are needs to, you know, from time to time to do those turn type projects. Whether they're uh, turning items as small as a pin, you know, for pin sets and things, they may have an accessory attached to uh, the mini carver, such as our six watt digital laser that attaches to the front. And they could laser engrave on those pin type projects or other turning type projects. Uh, I think of uh, some of the projects that I've made in the past with it uh, would be like a, a rolling pin for, uh, you know, the kitchen utensil arena uh, and things like that, where you can do some decorative holiday cookies or whatever the case may be. Um, but uh, you would want to um, have this accessory if you find a need or in your uh, production or as a hobby uh, to do anything that is that can't be accomplished on the flat table. On the flat table, we can carve two-sided projects uh, such as, uh, as an example, chess piece sets or uh, small statues where we can carve one side of the statue out of one side of the wood and then we carve another side and when it cuts out, we a dimensional piece. And in, in many cases, that is a, you know, a practical aisle, but there's just those cases where we have to do some undercutting. So having that piece being able to turn ever so slightly, uh, no matter what it's doing. So when it's carving uh, is very beneficial. Now, I alluded to uh, another accessory uh, with the mini car, which is the six watt laser. The six watt laser comes in about $849 and it is perfect for those laser engraved projects where um, we have a lot of customers who create not only gifts, but also items that they sell uh, to realtors. Uh, realtors give their home owners, uh, their home buyers, uh, a warming, a housewarming gift. And a lot of times uh, that gift could be something like a cutting board, if you will. Uh, and on the back side of that cutting board, that realtor's information or logo or what have you signature could be laser engraved as a little memento from them, but also as a reminder that if anything comes up in the future, that realtor is there to help them. Uh, when it comes to customizing, like I mentioned a moment ago, pens or pencils or whatever that you might uh, fancy turning and stuff on the fourth axis, the laser is great, but even also on the flat table. Uh, photographs, imageries, uh, when we have um, keepsakes or uh, loved ones uh, that we might want to immortalize, if you will, on a uh, laser engraving. Uh, the six watt laser is great for that. It is not a cutting laser, meaning that it will not cut through wood, uh, but it will laser engrave in wood. And in thin, small materials, uh, such as leathers or balsa wood and things like that, we could, with multiple passes, cut through. But uh, for the most part, it is an engraving laser at six watts. And uh, therefore, you know, laser engraving your company logo on the back of your projects or, uh, you know, uh, customizing a, a nice uh, memento for, you know, uh, customers to provide to their clients and things. Uh, the laser engraver is a great accessory. Now, because Burl's not joining us uh, this evening and everything, uh, this gives me the opportunity to uh, answer questions uh, for you guys and girls over this hour. And once again, I want to thank you all for uh, coming and spending an hour with me. Uh, at the end of this month. Uh, and so let's go ahead and uh, take a question that um, is from Jesse Eubanks. How easy is it to attach the laser? I'm assuming you have a to remove the router. And that, Jesse, is a incorrect assumption. Uh, on the mini carver, the unit, let's go ahead and come in here, uh, on the mini carver, the laser mounts right beside the router um, on the mounting bracket here. And the laser is actually removed. Uh, it is actually removed when it's not being used and it's attached when it is being used, but you never remove your router. Your router stays in place. Uh, the laser attaches right to uh, the side of the mini carver's uh, carriage. And everything. So that was a great question, but no, 
You do not have to remove the router in order to attach the laser. And it's two simple thumb screws to uh, mount the laser and dismount the laser. So great question, Jesse. Thank you for that. Now, um, other accessories that uh, we may find uh, useful uh, with uh, the mini carver, one of my personal favorites is the DWC quick set zeroing block. Now the DWC quick set zeroing block attaches or not attaches, uh, that was the incorrect term. It mounts uh, to the corner of your material and it allows the user to automatically set X, Y, and Z at the beginning of their project, as well as during tool changes, the router will return back to the corner of the material where the block is positioned, and it will automatically set Z for those tool changes as well. Uh, this is great for uh, being able to accurately and repeatedly get to your start position to initially set it up, but also if mother nature kicks in in the middle of a carving and the power goes out or something like that, and you lose your X and Y position, you can quickly recover by bringing the unit back to uh, the corner of the material, setting the block on the corner, automatically running the procedure to touch off X, Y, and Z to get you right back to where you were. And then you can go back and kind of continue where you had left off or where uh, the unit had stopped due to a power outage or something like that as a scenario. Um, the quick set tool rolls in as an accessory of about $49.99, $49.99. And uh, it is one of my personal favorites. Uh, this, um, along with the laser guide, which we'll talk uh, about in a moment, that is not available for the mini carver, uh, our 2440 units have a laser guide, uh, what we call the DWC laser guide, that creates a crosshair laser on our material for that when we're setting the XY position on the 2440, this laser guide shoots a red beam out to show where X marks the spot, right? Where the center of that bit is. Um, the mini carver uh, does not have a laser guide attachment uh, for that XY zeroing out, uh, but the quick set block uh, kind of adds an extra element to it with the Z touch off. Uh, automatic Z touch off and the Z reset for tool changes and everything. So it's a great accessory for all of our units across the board. Now, along with the uh, quick set zeroing tool, um, we have accessories such as dust collection, our dust brushes and things. Uh, these allow for um, a nice sweeping action. They're bristled brushes uh, that magnetically snap right onto the head. Uh, they create a sweeping action uh, to bring that dust and debris into the vacuum area and uh, really help with that. Now the unit itself when purchased comes with dust skirt, vinyl dust skirts that wrap around the uh, head of the unit uh, and um, act like a suction uh, resistance kind of area kind of uh, to encapsulate the carving area to uh, for that sectional, but the dust brush is really kind of got that sweeping option and everything and really kind of help uh, direct that debris into the vacuum stream. The dust brushes, we have a one inch dust brush and a one and a half inch dust brush. Um, as a uh, individual, they're about $39.99 each. Um, and, uh, as a set, they roll in around and I thought I had the prices off the top of my head. Um, as a set, they come in at, oh, that's uh, sixty nine ninety nine. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm getting there. I'm working on it. Normally I have barrels of back up here with that and stuff. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, we had other things come up that we had to take care of. Now the mini carver is, uh, even though it has an 18 by 24 inch cutting area, we can exceed our cutting area on our X and Y by a process called tiling where, um, we, it allows us to carve projects beyond our 
carving area size. Uh, for instance, uh, with our 18 by 24 inch cutting area, let's say that I wanted to do a uh, a growth ruler for uh, that we would have in a school or a kid's room or something, you know, for, uh, you know, a, a young one where it keeps track of their growth height and stuff. Now, those rulers usually are, you know, when you purchase them uh, retail and things like that, they're usually six foot in length. Um, we could create that entire six foot project and then we can create the tool pass for that project, whether it be a V card, pocket cuts, whatever it may be require. And then at, after creating the tool pass, we can break that design up into tiles. Uh, and those tiles, we would set them to be within our 24 inch cutting area and the unit will carve that first tile we would slide the board down, reposition it, it would carve the second tile, move the board down and continue all the way through that entire project. And it'll create a seamless carving for us, uh, but it does give us the ability to carve beyond our, uh, our, our size. Um, the, with that uh, extra added, you know, where, where we can go beyond the cutting size uh, to do larger projects and all, uh, the mini carver makes a great unit uh, because uh, it's, uh, you know, affordable as far as our entry level pricing. That's again, $2,679, but also um, it, uh, the footprint, the overall footprint of the mini carver is uh, 30 inches in length by about uh, 28 inches wide. And um, it, uh, 26 inches wide, 26 inches wide. Um, and that footprint, because it can set on your own uh, workbench table, or you can purchase an accessory like a stand or even a caster set to go with the stand to make it mobile. Uh, it makes it great for those small uh, shops or, uh, you know, uh, air, uh, you know, um, environments where um, space and footprint are important. Um, users uh, can feel confident about starting out with the mini carver and if they grow uh, and they need a larger unit, Digital Wood Carver does have the 2440. We also have the 4x4 and the 4x8. And with that, uh, they can, uh, if ever needed, they can trade in their mini carver towards the purchase of a new one, uh, you know, a larger unit. And they can trade in that next unit towards a larger unit and so on and so forth. They can grow as their needs grow. And that being said, uh, you know, uh, as far as trade-ins, uh, that does mean from time to time we do have trade-ins, but that is not uh, too often. And when they come in, they go out just as quickly as they come in. So we don't have an inventory of uh, trade-ins or used units that we could sell and all. So uh, very rarely do we have those, uh, but we do have them occasionally. You could check in with us and stuff if that ever occurred, but uh, most likely you're going to uh, end up, you know, going with a new unit because the trade-ins, uh, there's a long list. And as soon as they come in, we notify, you know, the folks on the list and it's gone literally like that. So I just want to throw out that disclaimer that, you know, we don't have a stockpile of, of trade-in units that's like, Oh, I could get a discounted unit because it, it's few and far between. Now, um, with, uh, Jesse and thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. I'm glad that explanation for the laser helped you, uh, and all, um, the other accessories for the mini carver that, uh, really, uh, come to mind would be a diamond engraving bit, uh, our diamond engraving bit and holder. Uh, this allows for etching in uh, non-ferrous metals and uh, acrylics and plastics uh, and things. Uh, we could even, uh, with the uh, proper diamond bit, we could even etch in you know other, other metals and things. Um, think of uh, like trophies and awards where you have those name plates that you uh, you know you engrave or something, or it could be uh, your aluminum parts or something, serial numbers or whatever the case may be. Uh, when it comes to your plastics and acrylics, especially cast acrylics, um, a lot of people like to use a diamond bit to engrave those images or designs in that acrylic for edge lit signs and things, uh, which are really cool and stuff. Now, me personally, when it comes to edge lit signs, I like using uh, the V bit uh, to, uh, to V carve my designs in the cast acrylic. 
but I have seen some amazingly beautiful results with the diamond bit, which me, I have not yet to uh, try yet because I'm kind of one of those guys that's stuck in my ways. I love the way my V carve uh, carves in the cast acrylic, uh, but looking at those results, I'm more and more tempted to uh, do the diamond bit. I just have not done it yet. So I don't really have a whole lot to say on that, but uh, I've seen some beautiful results. Now, one of the things I'd like to give as an announcement uh, to everyone is uh, if you are interested in learning more about Digital Woodcarver, uh, we have a owners group, uh, the Digital Woodcarver owners group on Facebook. It's a private group just for owners, but we are holding an open house uh, this weekend uh, from, it's actually uh, from Thursday, the 2nd, uh, sorry, Friday, the 2nd through Sunday, the 4th, uh, where uh, individuals are invited in to the group where they can talk with the other owners. They can ask questions. They can look around. They can, uh, you know, just get some more information about the digital woodcarver. Now, if you're interested in, uh, you know, uh, joining the digital woodcarver uh, owners group for the open house and you would like an invite, uh, please uh, reach out to us at, and I thought I had... Bear with me a second. Let me see if I have my banner here. Where is my banner? I don't have my banner. All right. So uh, sales, S-A-L-E-S -E at digitalwoodcarver.com. Uh, you can reach us at sales at digitalwoodcarver.com. I have no idea where my banner is, uh, is with that email address to throw it up on the screen, but uh, S-A-L-E-S at digitalwoodcarver.com. Uh, and uh, you can shoot me an email. And uh, all I need is uh, your Facebook. And you can even Facebook message me uh, uh, at, through the Digital Woodcarver page. Uh, you can uh, send a message through the Digital Woodcarver Facebook page that you would like to be invited to the open house and uh, we'll send you that invite. But if you email me, uh, then I'm going to need to know your first and last name on Facebook because I'm going to have to, uh, you know, uh, locate you uh, and um, uh, send you the invite because I need to private message you through Facebook with that invite and everything. Uh, and I want to make sure that I had the right person, right? There could be many, many of you out there with the same name. So just make sure you could even, uh, you know, provide me with the URL to your Facebook, uh, you know, profile or something uh, so I can send you that invite. But it's great uh, because it gives you an opportunity to come in and ask questions and talk with the owners and get their feedback. So you're getting it from our customers who own the machines who have spent their money to uh, purchase a digital wood carving unit, who use them every day uh, in uh, whether it be personal, hobby, business, what have you. And you're not just hearing feedback or information from a salesperson. It's great to actually talk to someone that's actually using it. Uh, that being said, speaking of, if you are just looking for CNC services in your area, uh, digital wood carver, another announcement we have is we have a new digital wood carver uh, local carvers directory on our website, digitalwoodcarver.com, uh, where you can find local carvers near you, where you can actually uh, get carving projects done. Or if you're interested in Digital Wood Carver and you find a local carver near you, you may be able to reach out to them and even get a demo uh, of their unit and everything. A lot of our local carvers that are Digital Wood Carver owners um, uh, will uh, be happy to, you know, talk with you, demo your unit, invite you to their shop and things. So uh, check that out for sure. Now let's uh, go in and um, let's throw in this up here. Thanks, John. I appreciate that. John loves his mini carver. Uh, very cool. Um, the only other accessories that really, uh, besides the diamond engraving bit, the DWC quick set zeroing tool, the fourth axis, dust brushes and all, uh, and the digital laser, can't forget that. Uh, the only other accessory that uh, we could add to the mini carver is the digital probe. Uh, now the digital probe is um, a digitizing probe that uh, will touch off and repeat 
um, uh, touch off points on a three dimensional item. Let's say for instance, that I wanted to, I wish I had, Oh, there we go. <clears throat> let's say I have a three dimensional item. Now this is a little bit too tall. Uh, I think it's over exceeds the four inch area, but let's say I wanted to duplicate uh, this leg or maybe even one of these sides. Um, and if it was something that I could take apart, right? Like a drawer front or what have you. Uh, the digital probe will come over and uh, touch off multiple points on that object uh, and it will register those points and allow you to duplicate that design. Uh, and the uh, digital probe uh, mounts again right next to the router. We never remove the router. Again, Jesse uh, asked that question earlier. Um, but it mounts right to next to the router and we could digitize probe. Now the digital probe rolls in around $150 uh, and it's, it's a great accessory for uh, not only 3D digitizing uh, and things, but sometimes, so I wish I had some uh, examples here, but sometimes, you know, wood moves, right? And we might have a project board that's not quite flat, you know, uh, humidity kicked in or something and that board's got a warp twist bow cup or curve in it and we're still going to utilize it or it might be intentional it could be like a skateboard body or uh, a, a a barrel stave or something like that where there is a curve in there uh, we are able to probe out uh, that cup twist curve bow arch whatever it may be and take our carving uh, tool path that we created and warp it to those touch points so that it will follow that curved twist bow or arc or what have you uh, and uh, create an even carving all the way across that uneven surface. It's called warping. Uh, so the digital probe is uh, really shines uh, for that, for being able to carve on those things. Uh, the one project that comes to mind, I just said is a skateboard, uh, you know, uh, being able, because the skateboard has uh, curves and contours and things in it, and being able to, uh, you know, if you're into that, you know, uh, laminating plywood and gluing it up and then, you know, carving uh, cool or awesome designs and things in there. We could even laser engrave. We don't need to work for laser engraving, but, you know, we could do some cool designs and stuff in there. And it really makes for a cool uh, project that we can follow that curve or contour. So the digital probe is uh, phenomenal for that. Um and uh, uh, so if you have any questions, uh, there is a chat area, whether you are joining us on Facebook or uh, on YouTube, there's a chat area where you can uh, ask questions. I'm happy to answer them uh, for you and all uh, the best that I can. Um, again, the mini carver is a great option for uh those of you that are looking to get into CNC and you're just getting started uh, and you don't have a whole lot of room in your shop and things and you're not sure what to do and, you know, buying a bigger unit might be currently at this time out of your price range or what have you. The Mini Carver is a great starter package. Uh, it is not a kit. It comes fully assembled, plug and play ready right out of the gate. And, um, it is, uh, it's phenomenal. Uh, it can do everything the bigger units do, 2D carving, 3D carving with the fourth axis, rotary type carving and all. Uh, and um, it, uh, it, it's a little powerhouse uh, of a carver. Um, and uh, I was so excited years ago, a couple of years back when we designed it because we had that uh, kind of overwhelming request for, you know, a smaller unit uh, the, because of space and things like that, because our 2440 is our flagship model. It's what we started with. And uh, when we uh, released the Mini Carver, I was excited with it because it is just a, it's, it's a phenomenal uh, unit uh, to, you know, and it's just, it, 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 it checks all the points as far as, you know, space saving, uh, affordability and, uh, you know, the things that we can do and then also the ability to grow, right? So uh, those are pretty cool. Um, it doesn't, uh, I don't think I appear to see any questions popping in at this time, so that's good. Um, let's take a look at the software um, 
and uh, just kind of show you some examples or something. Now, with every digital wood carver unit, um, the uh, mini carver, uh, with every digital wood carver mini carver unit, uh, the Vedric V Carve desktop design software is included. And users or owners of digital wood carvers, they receive a two hour training session, orientation training session on how to use the software in the machine. 24 hour a day, six day a week support via phone call, text message, or email. Uh, and every Tuesday night, I teach live free design classes to our customers. I stream live on our YouTube channel, Spindle TV, uh, every Tuesday night at 7 15 PM where they can actually come in. Uh, it's free, you know, so, uh, you can come in, uh, watch the class, ask questions, uh, and get answers. And the questions may not be class related. They may not be related to the topic, but it's just quite, it's a great way to ask questions and get answers. And we have those every once in a while, uh, probably once a month, I actually do Q and a train, you know, uh, live streams where it's just strictly question and answer. But most times we are teaching classes. Uh, the uh, design that you see up on the screen is a design that we did from last night's class. Uh, showing about design concepts, taking multiple elements and turning them into a viable design concept for a customer, client, or family member. Uh, if we look at the 2D view uh, and we zoom in over here, there are a variety of elements that we pulled in and the trace, the software, they could have been images, JPEGs, PNGs, bitmaps, GIFs, and TIFFs. And with these elements, uh, we can, uh, the software will trace them and turn them into vectors, uh, scalable graphics that we can size and all. And some elements, you know, that we like, but don't like, you know, uh, we loved this bracket, but not necessarily this floral arrangement in it. So we ended up uh, utilizing uh, the squirrel over here uh, to come up with uh, the... Uh, final piece, which was this design here, right? So a lot of different things and everything. And we teach these classes and uh, they're phenomenal. And those classes on Spindle TV on YouTube, uh, you're able to watch, but customers of Digital Woodcarver have a complete network of support around them, uh, whether it be uh, from us at Digital Woodcarver via text message, email, phone calls, uh, but also from the existing customers themselves. Uh, with the existing customers in the Digital Wood Carver Owners Group, it's a great place to ask questions, get advice, uh, get support, collaborate with other owners, and the owners share project files uh, with one another uh, where you can download these projects and carve them yourselves if you really like it and stuff and things like that. Uh, it's a wonderful family environment here at Digital Wood Carver. I am very proud of that. I'm very proud of the thousands of customers that we have that are just there to help uh, you know, demo a machine uh, to new individuals that uh, might be in their area that are interested in Digital Wood Carver or to help answer questions in the Digital Wood Carver owners group from other owners uh, to, uh, you know, uh, share their project files and everything. Very, very giving community, very uh, just friendly environment. And that in itself, you know, not only being able to reach out to us if you need us for support or training and things like that, but also just to be able to go in and ask a question and get answers is phenomenal. Um, the, uh, hey, uh, Clay's World, uh, first time here. I appreciate that. Um, we got another question from Ron Engel. Uh, what is the maximum feed rate? So for the mini carver, the rapid feed rate is uh, 125 inches per minute. Uh, and when you're carving, let's say V carving and things like that, you're generally operating um, between zero and 100 inches a minute. Uh, for our V carving and things, um, you're 35 to 45 inches a minute. For your end mills, uh, pocket cuts, profile cuts, 3D rough cuts and things like that, uh, you're typically running in a range of about 45 to 75 inches a minute. Uh, if you're surfacing uh, material and all, you're typically right at that 125 inches a minute. Um, if you're doing 3D carvings uh, with your ball nose bits, you're typically, again, in a range of about 45 to 75 inches a minute, depending on where you're at. Uh, but the maximum rapid rate uh, and everything is 125 inches a minute on the mini carver. Cool. All right. Awesome. Um, 
So uh, thanks, Ron, for asking that question. That was a great question, right? Uh, the um, software itself, uh, to pop back over to that, uh, is very user-friendly and intuitive. Uh, with the software, you have an entire library of video tutorials that come with the software with over 100 hours of step-by-step -step tutorials. Uh, you have a 400 page interactive manual uh, that uh, will take you right to the information that you want to know when you want to know it. An example would be, let's say for instance, that I want to know more about my rectangle tool here and how to use it. I can click on get help on this and that will open up a web browser page of the manual uh, and take us straight to the page about that tool. So we don't have to sit there and we're not reading through 400 pages to try to find the information we want. It takes us right to that information and provides it to us right away on how to use the tool, if there's any keyboard shortcuts and things like that. So phenomenal software as far as uh, user uh, friendliness and intuitiveness and also low learning curve, but powerful software. You can create many, many things. Uh, if you, you know, look at this design with the different elements and stuff that we uh, utilized, we ended up bringing those elements over to kind of lay out the design. And this one uh, says cook on it. Uh, last night in our class, uh, it uh, was our uh, Silver Oaks uh, course and everything, uh, such as you see here in the final design with the texture and all. Uh, but, uh, you know, this template could be, you know, changed to say whatever you want on it, right? Um, but putting those elements together to create some phenomenal looking uh, designs and uh, features and stuff is pretty cool. And so, you know, uh, the Vetric software is awesome. Now, Vetric VCarve desktop software that comes with the mini carver has a size limit of 24 inches by 24 inches. Uh, which means anything larger than that, uh, you would have to tile the design uh, with the desktop software. But if someone wanted to, they could upgrade their desktop software to Vetric VCar Pro. It is a $325 upgrade, but the VCar Pro comes with some additional tools and models and no size limit and everything, which is uh, which is great. But even with the size limit with the Mini Carver, it's not like it restricts you to that 25 inch by 25 inches. I can still do my six foot project. I can still do my larger projects and things, um, but anything above 25 by 25, I have to tile. We talked about tiling earlier and stuff. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a pretty cool option. Um, the uh, one thing that, uh, that's great, Jake, thank you very much. And one thing that uh, we wanna talk about is, uh, cutting depths, right? That can be achieved with the mini carver. So with the mini carver, you have a four inch safe Z height, uh, which means that you can carve in up to about three and a half inch thick with a small shallow carving. Cause you're going to have a amount of a certain amount of bit sticking out of that router. Right. Uh, but cutting through about one and three eighths inch thick material, you can cut through. Um, you could possibly achieve a one and a half inch cut through, but uh, I have not attempted that because you've got to have some kind of waste board under your material to protect your tabletop. So one and three eighths inches is about the max capacity of cutting through your material uh, and everything on the mini carver. Now for the digital wood carver 18 or 2440, as you go up, uh, the 2440 can cut to up to two and three eighths inch thick material and everything. So a uh, great Jake, I appreciate that uh, feedback and everything. And Ron, uh, earlier at the very beginning of the um, uh, tutorial, we talked about uh, the rotary axis. Uh, so yes, that was the first accessory that we discussed. The mini carver does have a rotary axis. Uh, the fourth axis for the mini carver rolls in around $499. And uh, for you, once again, I will throw that up on the screen and uh, show that off. Uh, so let's go ahead and pop back over to the screen here. And, um, oh, what, what, where's the picture? Uh, let's uh, 
to load. For some reason, my internet is just a lagging tonight. Um, but the rotary axis has a capacity, again, once again, of uh, 18 inches by about three inches in diameter uh, and everything, and it's $499. So yes, it does have the rotary uh, axis capability. So Ron, thanks for the refresher on that. And that's one of the ones that we talked about when we first started out. Again, uh, the roller caster stand uh, and uh, the, the roller casters for the stand, the mobile cart unit, uh, and the stand are accessories for the digital wood carver. The uh, caster stand is caster set uh, for making it mobile and all is about $99. And the actual stand is about $135. Uh, and um, uh, that is, you know, uh, pretty much the stand, the casters, the digital probe, the six watt digital laser, the fourth axis, rotary axis, uh, the DWC quick set zeroing tool, tape or, or um, diamond engraving bit, dust brushes. These are kind of, that's uh, pretty much the line of accessories that are available for the mini carver uh, and things. And so there's a, there's a wide variety of things that you may use or may not use that could be handy to help get more out of your mini carver to do things, especially when it comes to light production and stuff. So uh, pretty cool stuff. Um, let's go ahead and answer another question here. Uh, Tracy says, when you're saying about cutting metal, I assume sheet metal, but are you saying to use a diamond bit and laser is more for engraving? Okay, so let's let's let me reiterate that again to you, Tracy. Metal, uh, non-ferrous metals, sheet metal would not apply. Uh, non-ferrous metals you can carve in aluminum, copper, brass, titanium, and bronze. Your non-ferrous metals, and now. With the mini carver, it is a hobby style unit. It's not one of our 2440s or our bigger units and everything. So if you are going to carve non-ferrous metals, then you're going to be very conservative in your cut depths and your feed rates and things like that, uh, which you would be anyway. Um, but uh, what I was referring to with the diamond bit is that we can engrave. Uh, let's say, for instance, that I want to uh, engrave my initials on the back of my phone or in a, uh, a you know, aluminum part, or I want to make uh, little trophy plaques, uh, you know, little aluminum plates that mount to the front of an award or a plaque or a trophy. The diamond bit is great for engraving and things like that. And as far as the laser, the laser is wood burning. It's a wood burning or, you know, uh, like plastics and things or leathers, foams and stuff like that. We are laser engraving through, uh, you know, our designs. You know, uh, I said the word through, not a through cut, but, uh, you know, we might have a picture of a loved one um, uh, or an image or of our favorite pet or whatever the case may be. Uh, just recently, I made a uh, an urn, uh, a pet urn for uh, uh, someone who lost their pet and uh, on the front of the urn was a uh, embedded into the front of the urn was a ceramic tile with a laser engraving of their pet uh, and uh, and everything. And so uh, we can laser engrave uh, ceramic tiles and, and things like that and canvases and stuff. It's pretty cool uh, with the laser engraver. So it is an engraving tool, uh, but don't get that confused with you have to use the laser for engraving. I can use my diamond bit for engraving and uh, woods, platinum wouldn't use it really in woods. It would be more uh, plastics, acrylics, and non-ferrous metals. Uh, even some steels uh, we can laser engrave, or we're basically engraving, scratching them in. Uh, but when we're carving, uh, we are carving in hardwood, softwood, plywood, melamine, MDF, plastics, acrylics, composites, and foams. With a diamond bit, we can etch in glass, tile, corian, marble, and granite. Uh, we can etch in our non-ferrous metals, but we can also carve non-ferrous metals like aluminum, copper, brass, titanium, and bronze uh, and things and stuff and all. So think little brass uh, coins and things like that that we could, you know, engrave and all, or, you know, and carve and stuff. So that's what uh, I was referring to, Tracy. And I hope that long uh, answer answered your question or some part of it did. Um, is there a special bit for harder woods like oaks and et cetera? Well, no, most of your bits, they're all going to be carbide tipped bits. Uh, you would prefer carbide bits over high speed steel. And um, your bits could be uh, uh, wood bits, 
plastic bits like O flute bits or metal cutting bits, right? So we have, uh, you know, different categories of the type of bit that it is. Uh, as far as hardwoods, softwoods and things like that, you know, the hardened woods and everything, you use your regular, you know, your regular standard wood bits. Uh, they may have special coatings on them like ZRN coatings or conium nitrate coatings, coatings or uh, they could be spectra coated, which is a ceramic coating on the bit, uh, which help uh, extend the bit life, keep the bit cooler while it's carving, uh, and also allow that bit to carve in a variety of materials, not just wood, right? Uh, so uh, you could have, you know, wood bits, you could have plastic bits, you could have metal bits, or you could have a ZRN coated bit that allows you to carve in woods, plastics, metals, and other composites and things uh, and all. So uh, is there a special bit for harder woods? Not really. No, it's it's just your regular bits, right? So great question, LG. Um, let's see here. Uh Ron comes back and says, what I was asking was whether V-Carve Desktop could do rotary wrap designs. Oh, that's a great question. Yes, it can. Uh, uh, the V-Carve Desktop software does have a, uh, allow you to do single-sided jobs, two-sided jobs, or rotary jobs. Uh, the only thing that the um, desktop software does not allow you to do, it doesn't give you access to the gadget library. Uh, and one of the gadgets is what's called the wrapping gadget, uh, which basically allows you to do like a rounding tool path or uh, things like that. So in order to, uh, you know, um, with the desktop software and using the rotary, you would already start off with a rounded stock uh, or uh, there are other workarounds where you could mill off the corners, uh, have it rotate you know, mill off the next corner, rotate, mill off the next corner, and you could true it up, but there's not a wrapping that will automatically set that toolpath in the desktop software. So typically you're already starting with round stock and things like that. Um, another great uh, accessory or another great use for the uh, rotary axis is, uh, let's say that I was doing uh, either laser engraving or diamond bit engraving on Yeti cups and mugs, uh, you know, uh, those aluminum type, you know, coffee cups and water jugs or what have you. Uh, and, uh, you know, I might want to laser engrave on that, or I may want to diamond engrave, you know, initials and names or designs or what have you. Uh, I can mount that uh, Yeti. Uh, Yeti's a brand name, but, you know, I can mount that mug style uh, in there and do that engraving on that fourth axis, right? So pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Um, but typically, Ron, you're going to start with a round stock. Uh, and if you needed to uh, start with square stock or whatever, then you would upgrade to VGAR Pro where you have access to the gadget library where the wrapping gadget and things like that are. Right. All right. Awesome. Cool, man. I'm so glad that y'all are interactive and asking questions and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, it's it's super helpful. Uh, usually there's a bit of a back and forth discussion with Burl and I uh, and, uh, you know, uh, and different insights and things. And sometimes, uh, you know, when uh, when he's over in the shop, uh, we can uh, take a look at, uh, you know, demo and stuff. We don't have a demo. It's all discussion this evening. But come in April, uh, check out our Digital Woodcarver website uh, on upcoming live event shows on our page for our live event shows. And uh, there's a calendar of events coming up and our next month is uh, rolling out our information about the uh, 2440. And then we're going to go into discussions and demos on that. So pretty cool stuff. Yeah, LG, LG, uh, you know, uh, pops in and says, oh, pins too? Absolutely. Uh, we talked about that in a, a moment ago. Uh, so the... <clears throat> Uh, you can, uh, with any one of the RCNCs uh, that have the fourth axis or 2440 or a mini carver, uh, you could actually turn pins uh, and, you know, create some really cool decorative design pins, but also engrave. You could V-carve engrave or you could laser engrave on those pins and things and stuff, you know, to customize them and all. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty cool project. Um, the, uh, you would probably be, and you don't necessarily let me let me let me reiterate something. You don't necessarily need the fourth axis to laser engrave the pins. Uh, you know, you would have a cradle that your pin sits in. Uh, I don't have a pin, but I'll pretend that I do. We'll have a digital woodcarver pencil here. But uh, you would have a cradle that would secure that, and you could laser engrave. Uh, you know, on the flat table. You don't necessarily need the rotary. But if it was something a little bit larger where let's say a Yeti cup or something like that, 
where we need to turn uh, to, you know, do that engraving, whether it be diamond bit engraving or laser engraving, uh, the fourth axis is excellent for that. So, yeah, man, uh, pretty cool stuff. And, um, uh, you know, uh, it could be something uh, that uh, within our, you know, I could create little wood plugs on my table uh, that have a shape or contour like this flashlight, which is uh, for some reason disappearing. I have an invisible flashlight, everybody. Check that out. Wow. I don't know why it's not green, but hey, that's pretty cool. Um, but uh, let's say on the end of the flashlight, you know, we have this uh, shape here and on the front here, I could laser engrave little wooden cups uh, that would uh, secure here. And then they would go on my four jaw chuck in my live center. And now I can turn that invisible flashlight uh only sold at digital card no, I'm just kidding. Um, but uh, I could turn that. <laughs> that's weird looking. I could turn that flashlight and I could laser engrave, you know, initials or a name or something. So I could, you know, uh, do some pretty cool stuff like that uh, and things like that. Or I could diamond bit engrave and all. So uh, the fourth axis is a pretty cool uh, accessory like that. So uh, things have fun. Um, and, you know, uh, again, Look, to reiterate, I don't necessarily need the fourth axis to laser engrave on something like this. I could just secure it on the table and laser engrave, you know, there, right? Uh, but diamond bit engraving, we would probably want that, whatever it is, to follow the curve. Or if it's small enough and it just goes on the straight top edge, great. We wouldn't need it. Um, Clayton Shaner uh, asked the question, have you or have you seen anybody make dowel rods or tenons on the fourth axis um so dowel rods basically like when i think dowel rods i'm thinking like quarter inch dowels half inch dowels and all just round dowels yeah that's one of the most easiest things that we can turn uh you know uh and things like that now the mini carver again only has an 18 inch capacity by three inch in diameter so depending on what we're turning those dowels down to and everything, uh, those just move dowels. Uh, tenons. Uh, now, when you're talking like mortise and tenons, uh, that is a little bit more difficult uh, on uh, the mini carver. Our 2440 has a joint maker jig that mounts so we can carve on the vertical to cut a tenon on the end of stock. Uh, and uh, be able to do things like finger joints, mortise and tenon, dovetail joints and all that. And that joint maker jig accessory is for our 2440 unit. Um, and so the mini carver doesn't have that accessory. So doing tenons, uh, we would have to carve uh, the general shape of the tenon and the top shoulder off. And then it's a two-sided project. You would flip that material and again, you would carve the shoulder off and uh you know finish up and clean up the cut to make tenons right uh if you were doing it on the flat table um so that would be a way to create a tenon uh but as far as dowel stock you know yeah if i'm thinking dowels in the same way you're just you're you're mentioning dowels yeah turning a round piece of stock into a round piece of stock is very attainable right um let's see here uh, Ron Engel pops in with another question. And it's great that we have questions. This makes it so interactive. Uh, can the probe digitize and generate code off the fourth axis models? So great question. Can the, uh, can the digital probe uh, generate models or, or off of the fourth axis? Yeah, well, basically that probe um, or that fourth axis is like the Y axis. So think of a, let me see if I can illustrate this, uh, make sure this paper is not invisible. Think of a flat board, right? So we have our X axis, our Y axis, you know, that's carving. Um, well, when we do a rotary job, we're basically taking that part and wrapping it into a cylinder and so our X axis remains the same. And now the Y axis is rotating, right? So when we're digital probing, whether it be on a, you know, a flat board or a round object, uh, we are probing and that object will turn accordingly. And that probe will uh, take up the, uh, and register those points to be able to duplicate that and things like that. 
um, and um, and all. So yes, we could. We could even set up the probe to where it. Uh, let's say we have like this uh, little table like here that I need to refinish and stain, but um, uh, I could have this on my fourth axis and my probe could just come in and register the points of the profile. And um, now that I have that profile, I could export that profile uh, out as a DXF. And now in order to turn that DXF into a molding, I would use the molding tool path uh, or if I uh, really wanted to, you know, model, then that's the Aspire software. Now the Aspire software is a $1,650 upgrade from the desktop software, uh, but allows us to build 3D models and all. But the molding toolpath would allow me to take that profile and uh, sweep it kind of into a span and stuff. So, Oh, sorry, I have hiccups. Uh, but uh, so uh, to answer your question, yes, uh, we could digital probe on the rotary as well as the flat table, right? <clears throat> All right, cool. All right, guys and girls, man, this hour flew by. We've got about uh, four more minutes uh, and, and things, uh, but I really want to uh, first of all, uh, we have a, a holiday coming up, um, uh, Good Friday, uh, Easter Sunday, and that weekend and everything. Hope each and every one of you have, uh, you know, a wonderful and safe weekend uh, and, uh, you know, are just able to relax or work or whatever it is that you do, uh, but uh, be able to enjoy yourselves. Thank you for taking night uh, time out of your evening to join me for this hour uh, we do do these live events on the Digital Woodcarver YouTube channel and our Digital Woodcarver Facebook page uh, the last Wednesday of every month. And then, of course, uh, if you're uh, curious about the um, design software and learning more about that, every Tuesday night at 7.15 p.m. at Spindle TV on YouTube. Uh, Spindle TV, no spaces, S-P-I-N-D-L-E TV television, TV, or training videos, how would you say? Uh, you can check us out. Uh, there's uh, over 200 videos, uh, lessons on there. Uh, you can also find those on the Digital Woodcarver website. Uh, we do have all of those videos on the digitalwoodcarver.com website as well. Uh, but check out our Digital Woodcarver website for other great information. Again, our local carvers directory, more information on our accessories, units, and prices, uh, as well as uh, training and, um, you know, uh, where you could see a demo and things like that uh, if uh, need be. Now, the um, last thing that I want to say is, again, uh, we are having an open house second through the fourth at our Digital Woodcarver Owners Group. It's a great place to be able to go in and ask questions and look around and, and see what people are talking about and look at photos of projects that our carvers or our customers are making and things. Uh, if you're interested in that, you can Facebook message us at Digital Woodcarver's uh, Facebook page. Uh, you can send us a messenger or you can even go into uh, digitalwoodcarver.com and a messenger will pop up and you can ask that. Uh, I would need to know uh, if you go through the messenger, which would be the great way to do it, uh, then I can just uh, send you the invite and be able to add you to the group uh, for that weekend, for this coming weekend and everything. All right. Listen, uh, I look forward to uh, the next time. I look forward to seeing uh, you guys in the future. And Clayton, I look forward to working with you when you get your mini carver and things. Uh, and LG, you're very welcome. Thank you, everybody, for uh, hanging out with me this evening. And uh, thanks for asking questions. That made it really uh, enjoyable. Uh, I don't get, uh, you know, a, uh, uh, a lot uh, when Burl and I are discussing. We don't we get we get a lot of questions, but we don't get to get to them a lot because we're trying to fit in so much information. So this is pretty awesome. We appreciate that. Uh, and um, Tracy, you're welcome. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I look forward to working with you if you ever become a Digital Wood Carver customer. Uh, folks. Enjoy your evening. Enjoy your upcoming weekend. My name is Lainey Shaughnessy. I am the trainer, the salesperson, and support for Digital Woodcarver. So uh, your first line of defense. And if ever you decide to join the Digital Woodcarver family, I look forward to working with each and every one of you. Until next time, we'll see you soon. <laughs>